Welcome back to Homeless But Human. Here with you again for part three is Blake, Shayla, and Sam. As we finish this three-part series with Sam, the Homeless Outreach Director at Christ in the City. To recap in episode one, we discussed going deeper and higher in relationship with our friends on the street and oh how applicable that is to all of the relationships in our lives. In episode two, we talked about some different ways of categorizing that. By that, I mean the difference between forgiveness and reconciliation, what freedom in a friendship or relationship ought to look like, and then the difference between self-expression in a friendship and, again, how to take that higher. So with this, let us begin. Welcome back, Sam and Shayla. People of Christ in the city, people of every, everywhere around the world, this is David Christopher Pacheco. Hi, my name is Kimmy. My name is Arthur Ortiz. Been in Denver since 1973. Okay, so let's just talk in circles for a little bit. <laughs> let's talk in circles. Yeah. Let's just shoot the breeze a little yeah. bit. Now they see beyond what I look like. They see what my actions are and say, hey, that is a good person. A lot of people say home is home is where the heart is, but my heart's in many places. It's just I don't know where home is. Sam, so what do you have next? I see we have two more points to really put some flesh, some meat onto this topic. Yeah. So the the next one would be empathy and compassion versus accountability. So if you want to deepen your relationship with somebody, you know, a good way to do that is growing an understanding of them. And that's what empathy is all about. Right? Empathy is a reverent understanding of what another person is experiencing. Mm -hmm. So the idea of empathy is like, no matter where a person is at, or whether it's a good place or a bad place, positive or negative, socially acceptable or not, whether the situation aligns with your values or not, you try everything you can do to put yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which of course we know you technically can't, but we can, we have imaginations for a reason, Mm -hmm. right? We have these skills, these talents that we can fine tune and that's empathy empathy that's what empathy is so i mean for example let's say a a friend were to say to you on the street you know my family finally kicked me out they got tired of the drinking they got tired of me so let's say somebody said that to you You a response of empathy and understanding might sound something like wow uh this habit must be hard to quit and now uh, you must feel very alone yeah okay you're empathizing with them you're showing i understand or i'm trying to understand i'm trying to see into your situation um i mean that's where compassion is too to yeah to feel to suffer with somebody this is what compassion means empathy shows people that they're not alone which is one of the hardest parts about our suffering right it's the sense of isolation and we see that in an extreme way on the streets. Yeah. People are, are so alone that they have nowhere to go except the sidewalk in a tent. Which is not how the Lord created us at all. Yeah. Right? Like we are made for compassion and empathy, right? That suffering with, as Sam just mentioned, like that is that is one of the saddest things on mm-hmm. the streets, right? Not not even the suffering. It's the suffering alone. Yeah, and we, and we see this emphasized a lot in a lot of the other social services in the area, right? Lead with lead with compassion, lead with empathy. Uh, good. A different sort of response would be to call that friend higher. So in addition to empathy and compassion, friends are there for what? Accountability as well. Not just empathy and compassion and understanding. Mm. So back to the example, you know, let's say somebody said uh, to you, I, my family finally kicked me out. Uh, they got tired of the drinking. They got tired of me. Accountability might sound something like, I'm sad to hear that. I, I know you promised them that you'd get sober. Uh, do you think it's time to maybe get some help with this? Mm. Okay. A different sort of response. And as you mentioned, Sam, it's like the deeper comes first, right? Like um, you don't say that, that accountability, you know, like example of saying like, hey, do you think it's time to get sober? 
the missionaries, like us and our friendships, we should never say that in the, within our first few times meeting them. Mm-hmm. You know, no, 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 no. That comes through empathy and compassion yeah. and showing them I'm here to suffer with you, right? I'm here in this with you. And now that you are convinced I'm here with you, are you ready to take, take this next step? You know, and again, I say it because on the streets, I heard this so much of like, you know, one of the things with the homeless and the poor is they actually, we find that some of them really struggle with Christians because they say, you know, like if someone was a Christian, like my friend Arkansas, one of the saddest days for me on the streets is when he said, you know, everyone walking by me won't look at me. They say they're Christian and they won't even say hi. Mm-hmm. You know, it, just, it, was the, it was one of the hardest daggers like I've taken on the streets, which may sound odd, but it just really, really tore me apart. Mm-hmm. But the empathy, the accountability comes, or the empathy and compassion come before that accountability, right? We don't just meet someone and say, hey, you should really quit drinking. It looks like, you know, you have a problem with that. No, it comes out of a place of love. And I think, Sam, the the genius of the deeper than higher almost is so real. Yeah. Even as you were saying, like, maybe you could respond in this way for the accountability side of it. I, w- I was even feeling internally, I was like, oh, like that seems kind of hard. Like that is, my, <laughs> oh, my blood yeah. pressure raised a little bit, just like in that conversation yeah. of that sometimes could bring, maybe even bring a conflict or like that could bring, um, it's not just necessarily like comforting someone so they can just feel comfortable, yeah. but like you, you empathize so that you can, put yourself in their shoes so that you might know how to like call them higher or like hold them accountable too. Yeah. I I think what prevents us so often from going to accountability and why we flock to empathy and understanding is we fear conflict. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm raising my hand. (laughs) Yep. Everyone has their hands raised, but Sam, he's too good at this. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, And, and, And if you're listening to this, you may be like, you know what? I, you know, I, I'm sure you see the connections, but so much in my life, I'm like, oh, well, I'm not walking the streets as much anymore. You know, like I, I, I make it to Wednesday lunch in the park from time to time. And that's, you know, that's about it. But it's like, hold on a second. Like, this is the path of relationship. What a gift the poor are to us to show us the, the basics of relationship in a way, right? With all the walls ripped down, no mask to hide behind. It's like, this is friendship. Mm-hmm. Right. This is relationship. It's like, was, have I been empathy or empathic and compassionate? Cause that has to come before I call them to accountability. And I see this in community life with the missionaries. Oh, if you try to suggest something to your fellow community member and that community member doesn't feel, you know them well, yeah, they don't take that. This isn't like our own lives. Like if someone says, Hey, I think you should do this. You're sitting there being like, you know, you don't know me. Yeah. Don't you tell me that. You don't yeah. know yeah, me. Exactly. But when it comes from a trusted friend who you know loves you, we take that way more seriously. Mm-hmm. At least I do. But I'm broken and I'm, you know. Sure. I mean, there's nothing more bonding to, I, I would say, to two men. I can't speak for the women. But, like, when you uh, respect each other, you kind of know each other on a, well enough and then one of you challenges the other person and yeah there's a little friction there's a little bit of butting heads but you come out of it and there's just so much more respect and so much more you're just on the same page you feel like you're more of a team Mm -hmm. yeah and as you is like the whole premise of this talk is how to take a relationship or friendship to the next level yeah right and we know that like this is about the roots of friendship and can you really be a friend Right. If after going deeper, right. Emphasis on this. If after going deeper, you just let your friends sit there because you're afraid of conflict, you know, and Mm. the missionaries have to ask themselves this on the streets. Like, am I willing to put conflict in front of me with this friend because I care that much about them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm willing to risk their happy emotions with me, Yeah, you know, or a negative feed in. That is not easy. Right? Mm-hmm. We are not saying this is easy. And I know Sam mm-hmm. relays that time and time again to the missionaries. No, this this is the work of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and I don't think we have to be involved in, in street ministry with the homeless to necessarily be facing this. I, I, I think of any friend or family member where we're, we're kind of in this mode of just listening mm-hmm. and hearing hearing 
people's stories and how maybe their decisions are ca- causing havoc in their life. And uh, we just we just kind of listen and with a listening ear, and which is really good. But there just comes a certain point where I think love demands uh, accountability. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I can think of a, I can think of a lot of yeah. examples with that. Hmm. Uh, you know, let's say a friend is struggling with some sin, and there's a lot of understanding and a lot of room for support. But at a certain point, I think what they need from you is not more compassion, but accountability. Yeah. You say, hey, we've talked about this a number of times. Like you've asked me to listen and keep you accountable, and now, like I am. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, maybe maybe it's time that uh, you should do this and and kind of challenge, or maybe it's uh, you know a family member who mm. continually complains about another family member, and uh, you know you've heard them out a number of times. You know that what the struggles are. Uh, you can predict it before the conversation even comes up, and but you see that there's there's a sense of calling higher where the person in front of you maybe needs to have a hard conversation or forgive or something like that. Yeah. That's, that's where these distinctions come in is, uh, am I willing to make that pivot in the relationship? Maybe even risk a conflict for the higher good for the, mm. I actually our one of our formators in Philly, Patrick Walsh, he helped g- give this talk last year and he, he got up in front of the missionaries and just said, we, we're giving you permission to blow up your friendships. <laughs> and uh, the missionaries <laughs> were uh, taken back at first, but they're like, he said, don't, don't be afraid to, to make these pivots. If you discern it's the right call, we can't control people's reactions. It's not up to us to control them. It's for us to do the right thing. And uh, that was really freeing for a lot of the missionaries. They mm. thought, Oh, I can't, I can't uh, disrupt the relationship. I, I have to be liked. I have to have yeah. another conversation with this person in the future. I have to preserve the friendship of course, no, nothing wrong with any of those, but uh, they're they're kind of lies actually in in relationship. So man, oh gosh, Sam, that is so wise, so wise. I remember one of my fellow missionaries at Christ in the City named Kevin. He uh, if he heard someone complain about something, he was so empathetic. That first time, he took it in, he received it, and was just there with you. But he had his internal policy. He shared this with me once because I tried to complain about something twice or <laughs> show concern about something twice. And he goes, Blake, I will not listen to that two times in a row because that means you did nothing about it but complain. <laughs> right. And it was like, that was such a good, like he showed compassion. Right. And he very much showed compassion in that first conversation. Mm. That second conversation, he called me higher. He goes, this isn't holy or healthy. He goes, I, I refuse to listen to this again. If you've made steps, I'm happy to be here. And it was like, oh my, I feel like that's been one of the greatest like little life, yeah. life calling hires I've had. <laughs> yeah. it, it sticks with me. Sure. It really does. But he also knew that you could take that too. He did because he, because he got to know me. Yeah. Right. 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 Which is the first preamble to doing this. Mm-hmm. And very few relationships blow up when we challenge people, by the way. Uh, would you agree with that, Sam? Yeah, I I would say it's relatively rare that you're never yeah. going to talk to this person again. In fact, they might respect you more after you've worked it out. Yeah, yeah, they may get frustrated. You may have to work it out. I I think it's that is one of those things. Honestly, this whole time I've been thinking about my personal relationships in like my life, my friendships, my family members, because all of this just so applies to all relationship. But I I really like your approach toward even just comparing empathy and compassion first. Because I think if you don't come to that person, maybe if you do want to hold them accountable, if you don't come to them in a sense of like where you're suggesting a next step or where you're maybe offering a new perspective and you tell them what to do. Like, I'm like, how many times have we had conversations where you're like, I know you're doing this wrong. You need to just do it this way. That person still doesn't receive it like super well. Mm-hmm. And so just like even talking about the the balance of, I I actually see you and we've talked about this and we've we've worked through this a little bit together, but maybe what if you looked at it this way and like being offering in a sense of of, the, of a different perspective versus just telling them what to do. Totally. Yeah. The invitational yes. um, offering those types of words I, I can really get behind. Yeah. But when, if we all know that person who, you know, 
quote unquote knows what the right thing to do is knows what's good for you. Oh yeah. Just, <laughs> we'll just say it without, with un- unapologetically. Mm. I, no one wants to listen to somebody without like that. compassion. So that, that empathy and compassion versus accountability. What a remarkable way to grow in friendship. And mm-hmm. the last one, Sam, if you want to guide us home with this one. Yeah. Okay. We're talking about the differences between deeper and higher. Um, I, I think of freedom from versus freedom for. Freedom from, um, in this sense of going deeper, is you know, freedom from the things dragging me down. My current situation my addiction or illness, freedom from my faults, my bad habits, freedom from my family, you know, or this toxic relationship or, or something like that. Again, it's a, it's a dive into the self understanding. What do I need to get away from so that I can live my best life, my, the best version of yeah. myself, but maybe a, a, a different view a, a calling higher is uh, a freedom for, thinking of our friends on the street, you know, contributing a freedom for contributing, uh, in a positive way to society and people around them. Uh, the economy, uh, freedom to, uh, contribute to my friend circles in a positive way. Uh, freedom for fulfilling my duty as a citizen, a spouse, or, uh, the freedom to live out my duty as a parent. Right, those are that's very different than you know freedom from whatever I'm currently kind of suffering with or the things that, that I'm dealing with, but rather uh, freedom for living into a role that I'm called to. So, put in another way, you know, going deeper may look like helping a friend in his liberation from his own baggage, uh, but calling relationship higher could look like encouraging them to make commitments. And maybe start with a commitment to their own health or a commitment yeah. to uh, us, uh, us as missionaries. Hey, we're going to see you at this time. We're going to pick you up for coffee. If they don't show up, you know, hey, we, we missed you for coffee. How are things going? Where were you? Yeah. Uh, or an encouragement to recommit to their family. I, I, I We know a lot of people on the street who are married and their spouse is somewhere out there or they have they have children and their children are somewhere out there and they're they're not in touch with them. And so our vision would be that there would be some reconciling um, actions that take place and that they would get back in touch and have the freedom to be able to be a dad. Yeah. Or to be that encouraging mom to encourage her daughters, you know, how, how to be women and <laughs> how to be mothers. And um, yeah, yeah, but until they're free from something, mm-hmm. right, they can't be free for something. I love that it goes so much back to like, you know, the being acknowledging the hurt, right? The, the victim reality and then striving for reconciliation. Like you mentioned so many of these, obviously, cause they're all talking about the same thing, but they intertwine, they intersect yeah. in just the best ways. And that understanding of, yeah, like maybe on the streets, I, I can think of a friend, man, he, his addiction prevented him from being free to take care of his kids. And it's one where if you were to say, Hey, right now I'm calling this relationship higher. You should be a better dad. It's like he has this huge block that -hmm. is preventing him from doing that. But if we focused on that, the freedom from, then after that, this was almost step two. Yeah. You know, obviously a lot more steps, but I like that, Sam, this like deeper, the hierarchy being go deeper first is necessary Mm -hmm. to go higher. Right. Oh, what a, what a wise way of wording this in our relationships. Mm. Yeah. It's almost not like a, um, whether or not. I don't know if this is the right way. Maybe Sam, you look at it differently, but like not discerning whether or not it's, um, we should take the relationship deeper or higher, but like, have we gone deeper yet? Then can we go higher? Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if that's how you encourage missionaries to even look at it or encourage like our listeners to look at their relationships. Have I gone deep enough yet? Um, Do we know? Yeah. Does this person in front of me, are they free from, from the things in their life to be free for other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, it All of these steps, it just seems like the second part, the second, you know, verses almost seems like the more whole, like better part. If that, They're both good. Yeah. But like it's more 
more human, more whole to do. And then the second part of the freedom for someone else. Yep. Yeah, it's the 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 higher category is the kind of the ultimate call, yeah. right? But there's all kinds of steps that have to happen before that, and that are good in them. They're good in themselves, but it's just we're not meant to stop there. And you know, the the whole reason that we made these categories in the first place is to confront the situations where we feel in friendship like we're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. That these that a friendship has burned out of steam. Yeah, and that okay, now I see there's there's rich soil. Uh, I can go deeper. I can uh, dive into somebody's story more and, and what their preferences are, what they like and help them become themselves and express themselves. Like that's, that's a great endeavor. And, and, or maybe I've done all that stuff. Now the next step would be, let's look higher. Let's look at the ultimate good. Let's look at what God's calling this relationship uh, mm. towards we we know we i hope we are all convinced we are made for friendship it is the way god created us this is no different for the missionaries the homeless on the streets each and every one of you right like we are made for friendship mm. and this is so applicable to everything in life you know and and we can all think of those people those situations or sorry those people in those situations where it's like oh that's going to be a lot harder you know, maybe it's riskier to put that relationship on the line or, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be a family member or her, a close friend or a coworker, right? It's like, there's these categories where some are going to be more challenging for us to go deeper and call them or call them higher. Mm-hmm. And others yeah. seem easy, you know, yeah. and it's, but it's worth it. It's yeah. worth it in all of those categories. Mm-hmm. I have just one final quick question that I've been thinking about this whole podcast and I've been trying to put myself in the perspective of the listeners too. For our listeners, Sam and Blake, even if you have something to offer to this too, how do you approach, I, I mean, I've had people in my life that have popped into my mind during this podcast and I'm sure our listeners have too. How do we approach these sorts of relationships and these sort of people in our life as someone to be loved and that we do this out of this, uh, for the sake of love versus you know, a relationship to be fixed or a problem to be fixed. How do we continue to like keep that mindset? Cause I think it can be really easy to like just evaluate all the people in your life. Yeah. And you're like that needs to be fixed. That needs to be changed. I can do this here to get this outcome. No, maybe Shay- even with the missionaries too. Yeah. Like, Shayla, that's a great question, right? Just such a deep, deep reality that it's easy to do that. Yeah. I think, the question brings us back to kind of the core of our identity as Christ in the city and and our mission is that all of these things are in service of people and our relationships with each other. We came from relationships and we are made for them. Mm -hmm. And God has invited us into this transformation throughout our lives through precisely our relationships with other people so that we can be in relationship with him for Mm -hmm. forever so all of these things are are in service of our relationships so if this ever becomes a a personal project yeah or this is just about me being as helpful as i can and as pragmatic as i Mm. as i can be we're really losing sight of what this is all for it's all it's all in service of the person and they're good, and then my, and my relationship with them. So all these things, they should hopefully be in service of our friendship, build it up, deepen it, uh, enrich it. Yeah. If it's something that drives us away from each other, if it gives us a sense of alienation from them, uh, it gives us a sense of superiority or mm. uh, efficiency, anything like mm. that, we're not, we're not keeping the end goal in mind. We're, we're doing our own thing. Yeah. But if I do have the good of the other in mind, if I have my own good in mind, if I have the good of the relationship in mind, I'm willing to call people higher or I'm willing to put in the work to go deeper with somebody and really dive into the mystery of this person in front of me. They're both goods and, uh, but there's a, yeah, there's kind of a directionality to them. Yeah. That self-examination, right? Mm -hmm. Like checking our own purity of heart. Yeah. What a, yeah. What a, truly smart way to approach this right Mm because you're right if it's selfish if it's out of pride in any capacity that pride 
manifests itself. Not good, (laughs) you know, not good, but we know we're called to it. So looking at ourselves and saying, Hey, I'm going to go deeper in myself so I can go higher too. Yep. Yep. And and I think uh, maybe a test with this is you have to be willing to do this on an individual basis, like discerning each relationship in itself. Mm. When we like kind of default back to a process or like a set of principles in our mind or an ideal in our mind, again, we're stepping out of that realm of relationship with another person and like seeing that for what it is. And then like resorting to um, again, like a set of uh, principles or something. And that, that isn't personal. That's not relational. And yeah, there's really not a lot of fruit there. Mm. Thank you. Sam, thank you so much. Yeah. Just so insightful. And I love how rooted in examples and testimonies from our years on the streets, right? This isn't coming just from the only in the intellectual way and the wealth of the church there. It's the practical wealth of the church as well. Yeah. Honestly, this is all stuff from missionaries and stories that they've told, um, yeah, guidance that they've given the program that's kind of been um, summated in this in this talk, but they're the ones out there on the front lines living this yeah. stuff every yeah. day, and and we all are to some extent living these realities through our our current friendships or relationships and family and and whatnot. So it's it's fun to be able to kind of put them all on paper, but so it's good. cool to see them lived out in in real life. Yeah, thank Great. you, Sam. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thanks so much, Sam. Wow, we really appreciate it. I'm just, yeah, these conversations have been so good and I have feel very honored to be a part of them. And I imagine that our listeners have a lot to think about and hopefully a lot more principles to go off of in their everyday relationships. So yeah, we thank you for giving us these different principles that you give to our missionaries, Sam and Blake for your input too on these topics. I think it's it's really helpful for all of us to just be discussing this together. So Thank you to all of our listeners who tuned in to this third part of our three-part series. This has been a really rich one, and I'm glad that we got to share this with you. We'll see you all in a couple weeks. Bye. Thank you for joining us on Homeless But Human today. In order to keep producing this content for you all, we invite you to consider joining our known and loved monthly giving community. This is one of the most impactful ways that you can join us on mission. Your monthly gift sends missionaries out to the streets day after day, and helps us to continue recording and sharing our podcast. It's our vision that every city not only has soup kitchens and shelters, but communities who are committed to helping the homeless know that they have a home in us. And what is home but a small taste of Christ's infinite love? Visit ChristInTheCity.org and make a monthly gift today to join our known and loved community. And if you enjoyed today's episode, do us a favor and go hit subscribe and leave a review. To get more involved with the mission, visit ChristInTheCity.org.